All right, how's everybody doing? So before I begin today, I'm gonna to mention our sponsor, Ratchet Clothing. By now, everybody knows Ratchet's a company out of the UK. They have clothing for men, women, and children, various prints. I'll put a link down below, go check them out. Today, we're gonna to be speaking about a Lucchese associate by the name of Joe Farmer. And to give a little more background on Joe Farmer, he is the cousin of Danny Farmer and Lee Farmer, both who are members of the Gambino family. However, Joe Farmer has always been an associate to little Joey DiBenedetto. As we know, Joey DiBenedetto is the son-in-law of Vicar Musso. Vicar Musso is the present boss of the Lucchese family, even though he's away doing life in prison. As the story goes, years ago, Joe Farmer had a dream and his grandmother was in the dream. His grandmother told him some numbers in that dream. The next day he went and played a significant amount of money on those numbers and fortunately for him the number hit. With the money that he won he created a company called De Farmer Concrete and Joey DiBenedetto has always been like a silent partner in that concrete business. A lot of people mistakenly think that the DI in De Farmer represents the Benedetto, but that's not true. So now into the equation, we have Maddie Madonna. At this time, Maddie Madonna was the acting boss for Vicar Moody. And it was Maddie's thought that Joey the Benedetto was making a lot of money off this Joe Farmer, and he wanted some of that money as well. So he started putting pressure on our captain, and our captain at that time was Big John Castellucci. And he wanted John to put pressure on Joey the Benedetto to get an extra $30,000 a month that would go to the Lucchese family. And naturally, that money would get whacked up between Maddie, Stevie Korea, who was the underboss, and Joe D, Joe DiNapoli, who was the consigliere. Little Joey DiBenedetto and I had many conversations about this. Obviously, he was very upset. He told me, he says, could you believe this fucking shit? This guy's been with me, and now they're trying to go in his pocket. He belongs with me. And to be honest with you, he's 100% right. They should have never did that to him. So what Joey did was every time they brought up Joe Fama to him, he would yes them to death and then he would give them excuses that he hasn't run into him and he didn't see him. After some time, Maddie got tired of excuses and Maddie went to Big John and told him that he would be handling Joe Fama from now on, which meant that he was taking Joe Fama away from Joey DiBenedetto, a bad move. So now Big John starts dealing with Joe Fama and Big John was always saying that he's got a bad mouth. What he meant by that was, Joe Farmer not only grew up in Brooklyn around these guys, but he lived in Staten Island as well, where Big John was, and he had no respect for Big John. It even came to the point that John had some young kid named Ralphie laying on Joe Farmer's house. The kid never did nothing to Joe Farmer, but it was getting ugly. Ultimately, Joe Farmer started paying the Lucchese family $30,000 a month. Joey DiBenedetto told me at one time, he's never going to give them a dime. He was wrong about that because he started paying. At the very last Christmas party that I attended, Big John called me to the side and he had a question for me. He asked me if I knew that a member of our crew took $900,000 off somebody and I said no. And he left it at that. I later found out that it was Joey DiBenedetto took $900,000 off of Joe Fama. So in total, the Lucchese family took well over a million dollars from De Fama Concrete. So in Staten Island on Page Avenue, Big John had his cigar vault, that's where we all stood, and in that same shopping center was the restaurant Zio Toto. I happened to go one night with little Joey DiBenedetto. When we went in there, I seen Big John was there, Joe Farmer was there, and also that kid Ralphie that John sent to Joe Farmer's house was in there. I wind up leaving early that night, but the next day, I got a telephone call from Joey DiBenedetto telling me that he wanted to see me. So I went to his house and he told me to follow me. He said, good thing you left. There was a beef last night. Joe Farmer went after that kid Ralphie. So Joe Farmer must have known that that kid Ralphie was laying on his house. He seen him in, in the place and he started to go after him. Big John tried to get involved. Little Joey came to Joe Farmer's aid and it was a whole big mess. Big John was upset that Joey DiBenedetto didn't come on his side, but nothing ever became of it. Joey DiBenedetto and myself were not Big John fans. The funny part of the story has to do with a party I attended for Joey DiBenedetto's wife's 50th birthday. He had it in Vetro in Howard Beach. I went by myself that night. After I said hello to Joey and his wife, I walked over to the bar to get myself a drink. And who was at the bar was Joe Farm, his wife, and some other people. I put out my hand, I said hello to him, he said hello back, and after a little while I could tell he was very, very drunk, 
And at one point he turns to me and he said, you know, I'm a real tough guy. He says, I don't need people behind me. I'm a tough guy. I stand alone and I'm a tough guy. I said, congratulations, Joe. I walked away laughing to myself and I couldn't help think, if this guy thinks that being a tough guy equates to having guys stick their hand in your pocket and take over a million dollars from you out of your business, then the streets are more fucked up than I ever thought they were. <laughs> well, I hope you enjoyed the story. I want to thank everyone who has subscribed to the channel. I appreciate it. If you want to subscribe, you could go do so down below. If you have not subscribed to my other channel, the Unlimited Substance Podcast, I'll put a link for that as well, and you could subscribe if you want. I appreciate everyone who has subscribed already. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Stay well, stay healthy. Ciao for now.